Hi, everybody. My name is Roberto Hong, and thank you for accepting this invitation. We're going to talk about something really nice, really interesting, that is the summit about constitutionalism. The main promoter is Richard Albert, and I want to, for him, I mean, him to say directly, what is this about, and what do you we expect for the beginning of next year? Richard, the mic is yours. Well, Roberto, thanks so much for having me and for having us. You were very generous to say that uh, I'm the maestro, but really I'm not. I'm an equal partner with a number of people who are gathered here today, uh, except for one of our other colleagues, Danielle Runder Hashem, who can't join us. But I wanted to stress at the outset that this is a team effort. We're all equal partners. And our plan is to bring to the world the first of its kind experience, a first of its kind experience that we call the Global Summit that will welcome the world virtually online to celebrate ideas and to discuss big ideas in the study of constitutions, the study of constitutionalism. And our focus really is to give a platform to early career scholars around the world so that they feel integrated into what it is that we do. They feel welcome, they feel valued, and they feel supported uh, in this big world that is the legal academy. So that's really our main goal. But we're also doing some other exciting things. We have a really incredible plenary program that features really excellent scholars from around the world who are both senior and early career scholars who reflect the great richness of the diversity in every single field that we have. Uh, and moreover, we'll be giving some prizes. We're very proud to have four prizes that we'll be giving to four great scholars. Uh, all happen to be women. We didn't choose them because they're women, but they happen to be women, which is great. So we'll have a prize uh, announced on uh, each day, a uh, five-day program that we have. The first day we'll not have a prize, but every other day we'll have a prize given. And we're just looking forward to bringing the world together in this forum uh, to discuss big ideas in the study of constitutionalism. And I would not have done this, Roberto, uh, if I could not have worked with my colleagues because that's really what makes it a pleasure to do. They're great colleagues. Uh, the best of what they do, great scholars, great organizers, really rare, rare combinations that we find, but I'm very lucky to have gathered them in this group, and you'll have a chance to meet them in our discussion today. I'm really happy to meet you all, but before we go to Katarina, I want you, Richard, please tell us, you are from Texas, because one of the interesting thing here is that we are all seated here from different parts of the world, and that's one important thing because it, it deals with the main aspect of multicultural and multi-language uh, experience. So before we talk with Katarina, tell us a little bit, where are university are you from and the studies you've been developing? Of course, of course. Well, I'm a proud Canadian. I just happen to live and work in the United States. I'm now at the University of Texas at Austin, where I'm the William Stamp Sparish Professor in Law and Professor of Government and also director of constitutional studies here. But I'm from Canada. I was raised in Canada. I did all my elementary and high school in Canada, but I came to the US and the UK for graduate studies and undergraduate studies. I went back to Canada for a year where I clerked for the Chief Justice of the Canadian Supreme Court. But since then, I've been in the US. Uh, perhaps I'll be here for a bit longer, perhaps not. But right now, I'm in Austin, Texas. And that's how we know, because all the oak leaves everywhere. So Canada can be, be left out. <laughs> That's right. We have uh, great coverage in our global summit team. Every single region of the world is covered, and I'm proud to stand for Canada. Excellent. Now, Katarina, we talk with you. Tell us a little bit where you're coming from, where you're connecting, and your experience about this, and what you expect for the participators. Hi, so my name is Katarina Santos Botalho. I am a constitutional law lecturer uh, in, uh, I'm the chair of constitutional law in the Catholic University of uh, Portugal. We call it Universidade Católica Portuguesa. So I teach constitutional law, fundamental rights, global constitutional law since uh, 2005. I am very, very eager for, for this uh, summit. Uh, one of the, um, the most distinctive features, I think that it is a, a summit on constitutionalism and not a summit on constitutional law. 
uh, therefore we do not expect a strict uh, doctrinal analysis, but we welcome uh, a comparative, historical, philosophical, empirical or sociological analysis that, uh, that might unveil the, the living constitution. Um, I think also that um, one of the, 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 the unique features of this conference is that it's, it's openness, it's uh, inclusion and diversity. It is open because it's uh, multilingual. We will uh, have six languages uh, during the, the summit. Um, it, the openness also reflects on the fact that it is multi multi time zone as we were speaking before and we welcome scholars from all ranks around the world so therefore we will have the chance to experience something unique we are going to talk now with who you win but before we go talk to her katrina i would like you to tell us uh, who do who are the, the main address of this uh, uh, activity what kind of students, uh, what background should they have? For, for, for attending or for... Or for, for attending, uh, for attending, for attending. For attending. Yes. I think that, uh, well, of course, um, uh, law student, law graduates, uh, students from all the levels of graduation, post-graduation students, uh, but also uh, students from uh, other courses than law might be interesting because we don't have that uh, strict constitutional law analysis. It is a more broad analysis. Therefore, I, I could imagine a, a, um, a student of political science or, or sociology having a, a huge interest in attending the conference. I think that's right. Uh, I think that's right, uh, Roberto. It's really open to everyone. Uh, we've received emails from people who aren't even students, who aren't even in law, who said they want to come and attend and just be an observer. And we welcome that. One of the ways that we're able to do that is because we have a number of co-sponsors for this program. So not only is the University of Texas at Austin sponsoring it, not only is the International Forum on the Future of Constitutionalism sponsoring it, but now the International Society of Public Law is a sponsor, Icon S. And so it's really incredible to see such interest in supporting this first of its kind event. And that's why it's open to all. It's free for everyone, Roberto, free for everyone, because we don't want means to be uh, a barrier for entry into this program. We really want everyone to have the benefit of learning from these great ideas that are going to be discussed, to meet new people, uh, and to really draw inspiration from, uh, from this gathering. So Katharina is absolutely right. Anyone is welcome to join us. Thanks, uh, Richard, for your remark, because if, once you study more and more and more constitutionalism, not constitution, but constitutionalism, you, know, you see how it deals with all the, the, all the matters. I mean, philosophical, economical, sociological, and that's a, that's a plus. Hui Wen, tell us a little bit where you're connecting and what's uh, your main studies. Hello, uh, I'm Hui Wen Chen and from Taiwan, but currently I live in UK and work with uh, work at the Warwick University. And I did my postgraduate study in the United States and, and then moved to, uh, moved to England. Uh, currently my project is about the transitional justice and the constitutional, constitutional law, especially in the context of Taiwan. So uh, now I'm uh, participating in the research project with our, our government. Um, the government uh, agency promoting transitional justice. So my uh, my paper is about how the uh, how our constitutional what the role of our constitutional court play in the authoritarian regime during uh, uh, martial law era, and how should we evaluate uh, what they did, and are they uh, facilit are they uh, the, the, supporter, the supporter of the authority, authoritarian government, or they, 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 they couldn't, or they just, uh, just like they, could, they, they have no choice. So basically, that's my, my uh, current research project on um, uh, transitional justice. And uh, I'm very happy and very honored to join this project, the great project of the uh, Global the Summit. And because I'm responsible for the panels in, in Chinese. I think it's, it's very exciting because in, 
in the Chinese speaking world, basically there are few opportunities for young, for young scholars, especially grad students, not to mention undergraduates, uh, for them to have the opportunity to sit, to, uh, sit in the same panel with well-established scholars. Mm -hmm. So basically what I did uh, when promoting, uh, when uh, promoting this uh, global summit in Taiwan is that I especially reached out young scholars and uh, graduate students in uh, Taiwan's universities. So I think I'm very happy to see that some uh, graduate students, they uh, form the panel and even uh, under, even there, there's an undergraduate, under, uh, undergraduate, undergraduate student participate in this conference. Mm. And so I'm very happy to see that, uh, that uh, uh, the Chinese speaking uh, students, they have the opportunity to participate in this international, uh, international conference and uh, to share the ideas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one thing, you went. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it, transitional justice, mentioning yes. authoritarian regimes, yes. mentioning Taiwan. So yes. those elements can leave us here to talk about hours and hours <laughs> and hours. So that the scary part of this is that we know when we begin to talk and we don't know when to stop. Yeah. Because it's really interesting. It's really interesting yeah. and very current. It is necessary. It is and urgent. for many countries, it's the urgent issues, yeah. Well, imagine talking from Caracas, Venezuela, everything that's going on around here. No? Yeah. Interesting. Let's now talk a little bit with Christina. Hi, Christina. How are you? Hi, Roberto. I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for this opportunity. Well, tell us a little bit where you connected from and what's your, your, your studies, your major, and your, your themes. Sure. Uh, I'm connecting from, uh, from Italy, from Rome. Uh, I'm affiliated to Lewis University, which is a private international university in Rome. And uh, I'm assistant professor of comparative public law there in the political science department, which going back to our discourse before means uh, teaching comparative constitutional law to political science students, mm -hmm. as well as to some law students which makes things uh, uh, regarding constitutionally even more entertaining, I would say. And my main field of research uh, uh, lies at the intersection between uh, comparative constitutional law and uh, um, European constitutionalism uh, at large. So also connecting to the process of supranational integration or convergence in the field of protection of fundamental rights. Great, great. Now tell us a little bit the professor, the speakers, who were, who are they, and what themes and what matters can we expect from them? What knowledge? Well, we have a um, very distinguished panel of uh, uh, plenary speakers covering the different continents, um, and uh, I think they they can really bring. Uh, um, their own, not only uh, doctrinal or theoretical framework to, to the fore, uh, but also uh, the, their professional view of how constitutional law develops, the criticism and the problems that constitutional law uh, faces today. Um, and uh, as Richard was saying before, um, they also have different uh, academic ranks. They are all brilliant, of course, but uh, they are at very different stages of their career. So it, I think it's for, uh, for some of them in particular an opportunity also to, uh, to, to get to be known by the, the wider public of constitutional scholars um, standing next to uh, somewhat uh, giants of uh, constitutional studies. Hmm. I'm, that's, that's one point I think, Roberto, that we're also excited about is that we've created a platform that is being shared by both early career and senior scholars and people in between. And this, I think, drives home the point, Roberto, which is that what matters for us are ideas, not rank, not status, not title, but ideas. And that's why we have on the same stage, Ron Herschel, Roz Dixon, Barry Woon Gebeyek, early career scholars, senior scholars, all excellent, all excellent. Great, great, Richard. And now that you mentioned this, I want to remark that I was reading the, the page and you can submit some papers either in English 
in Italy, in Italian, in German, and well, no, not German. German is not mentioned there, <laughs> but in Spanish. And it is interesting. Uh, Antonia, tell us a little bit about this. I mean, the multicultural approach. I would like to make some remarks on that. And I see that Janet mentioned it like, did like this, so then we continue with him, with the, mm -hmm. the cult multicultural approach. Yes, uh, uh, this uh, uh, global forum of constitutionalism uh, is uh, a great opportunity also uh, to share the diversity in constitutional law scholars uh, because uh, we uh, have uh, accepted uh, submission in different languages, so in Spanish, in Portuguese, in English, uh, in Chinese, uh, and in Italian. And so it is uh, a great great opportunity uh, to uh, convey um, all scholars interested in, uh, um, in constitutional law studies uh, at really a global level. And this is something that uh, I also uh, try to do in my, uh, in my class uh, because I'm teaching uh, global constitutional law and comparative legal tradition at the University of Milan in Italy. And uh, what I realized uh, teaching uh, these uh, topics this year in particular are the challenges that uh, constitutionalism is facing at the global level. And so I try to um, introduce my students uh, to the, uh, these challenges at the global level, uh, opening them to the uh, non-Western uh, contents. So I invited uh, colleagues from Hong Kong, uh, from Chile, uh, from Israel, and so uh, I really appreciate to uh, give them uh, the opportunity to know uh, the diversity of different jurisdictions and the richness of uh, global constitutional experiences it is great you're mentioning israel you're mentioning uh, chile chile a couple days ago they have this referendum interesting to put an eye on that because i have my personal perspective let's not talk about it because another hour we'll be here talking <laughs> and but i think those are the the issues that we have to talk about and this is a great platform to exchange knowledge and point of view and cultural approaches. Janif, your turn. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thank you, I'm very much happy to be here. Uh, so I think what's very much exciting about this is that we think of COVID-19 as a crisis, something that limits us. We can travel, we can move, but Richard was uh, uh, brilliant enough to see this as an opportunity. Uh, not as a crisis, but to use this crisis to, to create something new. And I think this is the first time, maybe ever in the world, that any law student, legal scholar, regardless of the fact whether he had, she or he has money to travel abroad, to pay to enter a conference, they can all participate in this conference. I think this is absolutely amazing. And if you look at the... Um, at the various topics that will be discussed in the conference. I mean, we often think of constitutions as something very uh, uh, unique, national, specific, but many of the challenges are common to, to various jurisdictions. And what we have done is basically allocated the various papers we got to specific topics that are common to many jurisdictions. So you'll see there are panels on emergencies and crises, obviously, separation of powers, law and religion, rule of law, judicial independence, uh, populism and democratic erosion. So I think the topics would be highly interesting, highly relevant. Um, I, uh, in my university, in the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya, I teach um, uh, constitutional and comparative constitutional law, but my main area of interest is constitutional change and limits to constitutional change. So we would have various panels on constitution making and constitutional change. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to this event. I think the unique aspect is that usually or traditionally comparative constitutional law was very narrow. So people compared US to the UK and if they wanted to be brave, they looked at France and Germany if they knew the language. But no, we take a very global perspective. We broad our perspective. We look at the global South, 
and uh, and we look at various jurisdictions that are never studied. So I think this is uh, uh, really is an exciting opportunity for us to to learn, to meet new scholars, and to broaden our perspective. Great, Janet. You mentioned it. You mentioned it. The the, the language. Uh, well, we are all talking. English, but the constitution or constitutionalism, we could see it has a language itself. The, the language of freedom and the language of constraining power. I'm really aware of one thing. I, well, I more or less speak some English so we can talk, but there is a lot of people, there are a lot of people that do not speak English at all. So is it possible, have you ever thought having like a, a parallel or, a, or another specific languages so would you can, have more and more, more people to come for certain specific uh, lectures. So some people in Spanish only could assist or Italian only, because I think we're going to share, and I'm going to ask you, Richard, have you ever thought that probably you can have some panel in Spanish or another one only in Portuguese or only in Chinese? So we can merge more people, probably, they don't assist to all the all the panels, but probably it will be a good idea to have a specific thematic and language panels. Well, indeed we have this, uh, we are doing this. This is one of the innovations in the conference is that we recognize that English is a dominant language, but it's not the only language that people speak, of course, not the only language that people write. And moreover, moreover not everyone is comfortable presenting a paper in English, but they have great ideas. And so recognizing that we've said, if you want to participate, but you want to participate with a paper in Italian and give a speech or presentation in Italian or Spanish or Portuguese or Chinese, we welcome you to do that. And so this is one of the innovations that the, the Global Summit is bringing to the world is a recognition that there are many people with many different interests, many different backgrounds, and we just want to create a space for people to feel valued and welcome and heard. And that's what we're doing. Now your question though, I think suggests a further innovation that we might do in the future, which is to have panels that consist of persons, each of whom is speaking a different language with simultaneous translation. And they can all talk about the same issue, but with different first or primary language with simultaneous translation. We're not doing that now. Uh, but maybe in the future, that's something to do because we've now grouped panels, papers on panels that deal with the same subject and are in the same language. But I think the next frontier, Roberto, is to have papers and panels that deal with the same language, excuse me, same subject, but are different languages. So we can really have a conversation that is cross-jurisdictional, cross-boundary, cross-temporal, cross-language. So maybe that's something we can do in the future, but already what you've asked for, we're doing already, which is which is something that we're very proud of. I would like in the same order that we talked, first Katarina, Christina, Anto uh, we, then, and the last, it will be Janif, to ex express their invitation to all the students and all the panelists to join this activity. Let's begin with Katarina. Uh, sorry, Roberto, I did not understand what that I want you to give some words inviting the panelists and the assistants to this activity to join. Oh, okay. So, so uh, I, I hope you will enjoy our, our summit. We have, um, we have worked very hard to make it uh, something singular and distinctive, and I think you will enjoy it. Yes. Then yeah, I hope. Wait. I look forward to this global summit. It is not only the academic uh, serious discussions, but also uh, the social events. So uh, I think that good, the, great, uh, the, the main idea is that the networking and the know each other. Uh, I think that would be fun. Christina. I very much look forward to the global summit and to meet uh, so many new colleagues uh, and scholars in the field. Uh, maybe to create new networks uh, and new opportunity for exchange and interaction um, amongst different jurisdictions and languages, of course. Antonia? 
Yes, uh, I'm uh, really looking forward to the Global Summit uh, and uh, I especially invite younger scholars, uh, graduate students, uh, PhD students and early career scholars to attend. I personally invited my students uh, and so I uh, share this invitation especially for uh, younger scholars all around the world. Yanif. Well, I welcome younger scholars and less younger scholars. Please, everyone, uh, join our community and be part of the Future Forum for Constitutionalism. You know, Roberto, I just want to add one thing, um, which is uh, first, just a word of public thanks to this team. You see, you see with your own eyes and ears, Roberto, how amazing this team is, don't you? It is. Uh, it is to totally great. I'm enjoying. No I'm enjoying more than you are enjoying it. <laughs> well, it's so hard I'll to imagine do. all it's hard how many, to do. Hard to do. how long have but, you been working out this? Well, it's, it's hard, I think, to enjoy it more than me, but I think the point that I want to make is quite simply a public thanks um, to, this, to this group. It's, it's, I, there has not been a team assembled like this in any organization in the study of public law. This is the best team you can, you can put together. And that will be evident in the product that we deliver to the world. I also want to make sure that we acknowledge uh, Daniel Bunder Hashem, who's not here with us. He's uh, a great scholar, a great leader, a great organizer at the Federal University of Paraná in Curitiba, Brazil. And, uh, and he sent you his greetings, Roberto. He looks forward to chatting with you another time. And we, same. Look, forward to, we look forward to seeing him uh, the same. again. Yeah, no. yeah. And I also want to just say, Roberto, just two more things. The first is that uh, everyone is welcome to join is going to be free uh, for people to attend any of the programs that we have. And I think we have maybe like a hundred and something panels. It's just quite extraordinary. And uh, if you're a member of ICON S, the International Society of Public Law, you will have the opportunity to participate as a chairperson or discussant in one of the panels. And, uh, and we'll announce that very soon. This is part of the partnership that we've entered into with, with Icon S, a great learned society, the best learned society for the study of public law in the world. And then finally, Robert uh, Roberto, just we want to thank you for your interest in chatting with us. I mean, this is really a gift to us that you're, you're giving us, a chance to talk about what we think is a great program, a chance for us to see each other. We haven't seen each other virtually uh, uh, in, in a couple of weeks, so we want to thank you for that. Uh, but we want to thank you more generally, Roberto, for what you do with your video series. It's really a, a great contribution that you make uh, to the world of, of, of law, really, the world of constitutional law. You're really helping to shrink the space that the world is. You're helping to break down barriers like borders, and you're bringing people together. And so we want to thank you for that very, very much. Oh, thank you again. And this is your house. Anytime do you want to promote any material, any paper you want, feel free to send it to me and I'll, and I'll deliver it in my, uh, well, we have Cultura Jurídica and feel free to post any information you want. I have to say something before we finish. It is true that we are a team. That is correct. But none of this could have happened without the vision and leadership of Richard Albert. So everything we do, it is thanks to him that this must be acknowledged. I second that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Well, well, guys. Very, very, very nice of everyone to say, but uh, it's such a great team effort and nothing would be possible uh, without everyone pitching in, in in such extraordinary, incredible ways. So, so thanks to all, really. Looking forward to this event. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great event. January 12th to 16th, 2021. Uh, live from around the world, <laughs> whether whether you're in you're in Porto, Portugal, whether you're at your desk like me here, wh wherever you are, you're all welcome. That will Let's be make constitutionalism great again. That will be live, <laughs> live from planet Earth. That's right. That's right. Broadcasting all the way out to Mars, if anyone is interested. Yes. Well, guys, thank you for this great time, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so Thank you much. much. Thank you, Roberto.